Alan, how are you doing? Doing great. Uh, thanks to the nice introduction. So um, I want to ask you about the first PC you built. Could you tell me a little about it? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see. I was probably like 12 at the time. And, uh, you know, we lived in the Bay Area. So I said, ah, everybody's building PCs. Not that hard. Uh, let's just go to Fry's and put a bunch of pieces together and see what happens. And so we tried that and um, nothing happened. So we basically had a bunch of computer parts staring at us back and we said, okay. So instead we just returned it and then bought some speakers instead. So <laughs> that was my first attempt at a PC build. Do you know what? That sounds like my house now. I, my husband works in IT and I think this is the place where computers come to die because there are so many bits of machines <laughs> lying around the place. I've even got some in frames downstairs. I've made them into art because I have so many of them. Uh, it's just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm becoming distracted. So um, today you're going to be talking to us about ac GPU accelerating node with the node Rapidus data science framework. So I'm going to hand over to you and I'll come back for questions later. Great, thanks so much. Um, so yeah, my name is Alan Niedemark and I am part of the RAPIDS team. I am the visualization lead for that group and uh, we are part of NVIDIA. So, you know, might've heard of them, something to do with the GPU cards. Um, but what I'd like to talk about is how we can use um, these GPUs to kind of accelerate Node.js with the project we've been working on. So Rapids is a, it's open source GPU accelerated data science platform. So built on CUDA X, uh, you can find way more details at rapids.ai or the developer forums on nvidia.com. Node Rapids uh, is currently in a technical preview, but it's also an open source project to create kind of these modular GPU accelerated Rapids bindings in Node.js, um, as well as other complementary methods for uh, supporting high performance visualization. So we're on the Viz team and sort of that's where our bias is. We, we kind of noticed um, some things lacking in the Viz sphere. And so that's sort of why we started this whole project in the first place. Um, and so it led to basically Node Rapids as a project. Uh, a little bit more about Rapids in general. It's uh, mostly Python and C++ libraries. And it you know, encompasses things like QDF, which is uh, data frame operations, if you're familiar with Pandas. Uh, it has QML, which is machine learning algorithms. It has QGraph, spatial signal. So these are all different uh, libraries that work very nicely together and all are GPU accelerated and kind of speed of light performance. Um, Cool cross filter, which is a notebook based cross filtering dashboards, um, is the one that we're working on as a Viz team. And many more are being developed and they're kind of being improved all the time. Um, lots of developer efforts going towards this, and it's kind of uh, making a, a kind of a, a big impression on the data science world, um, but specifically inside of Python and C. Uh, so, as on the Viz team, what are some of the things we do? Uh, this is a a uh, nice project called Data Shader. It's another Python one. And uh, it's able to render and visualize like 300 million points in under a few seconds and make it kind of interactive speeds, which is great because uh, it's really good for analytic visualizations where you can zoom in, zoom out, kind of do exploratory stuff and really interact with your data in kind of real time without having to do pre-aggregation or tiling or any of these things or setting up databases. Um, it's sort of, you load your CSV and you go. Um, the issue being though, this is all done in Python. And um, there are lots of fantastic uh, JavaScript and visualization libraries out there too. So this is uh, a demo we'd made for a NVIDIA GTC conference a couple of years back. Um, it's using another great visualization library called DeckGL. Um, it's in this case, uh, aggregating 150 million rows of mortgage data in real time, and you can do all kinds of great cost filtering on it. And it looks really pretty on the front end. Uh, and then the back end is a total mess. We 
had to use some node servers. Uh, we had to use some Python for Flask and then switch to Tornado. And then we had to do some packaging for getting access to GPU hardware and then some Nginx for routing. And it was a total mess. Um, maybe okay for a demo, but definitely not for long-term uh, sustainability on a library or anything like that. And it, it was painful. So what we ended up really doing is like, okay, this is too messy. We're just going to focus on Python work and do say Kucross filter and, and work through notebooks and, and Python based visualization um, frameworks. Um, but, you know, in the heart of our hearts, we still wanted to go back to the kind of JavaScript land um, and make some great, uh, take advantage of the great visualization libraries that are there. Now, this is a lot of exposition to why we end up going with Node Rapids, but really it comes down to this sort of uh, paradigm where on the left you have your continent of Python, C++, and CUDA land, and on the right you have like JavaScript land, um, and there's this big chasm between, between them, and they really, um, it takes a lot of pain to connect them, right? Uh, which is a shame because ultimately the, the GPU is the hardware side is kind of on the Python side, and um, you have lots of great high performance libraries. So HPC libraries uh, on this side, I mean, they're traditionally harder to share and often not very developer friendly since they're a little bit more legacy. Um, but it ends up being most of the data and compute, especially in enterprise tooling ends up in this kind of continent. And then the JavaScript world is all browser sides, which is great for shareability and accessibility. And you don't have to really worry about versioning and things like that. Um, but even with using WebGL, you know, it's limited compute power and rendering capability, and it's sort of very much sandboxed, right, as it should be, but um, you're very limited to what you can do with it. And um, in some sense, most Python-based tools and vids just sort of still end up connected to the browser JavaScript anyways. So, um, you know, the, to, to get past this chasm is really uh, takes all that crazy tooling. Um, which is a problem because you know data size, the complexity, the the broader adoption of machine learning um, has put greater demands than what people expect on web apps and just enterprise applications in general. Just requires more compute, which is what GPUs are really good at, right? Um, they're becoming more prevalent and becoming more available for these GPU GPU tasks. Um, but again, to fully access GPU and all that hardware, you kind of need to be as Polyglot developer, like super full stack, you need multiple languages and figuring out all this plumbing and frameworks, uh, and it's a real pain. Um, this is also a shame because, again, these data and ML engineering pipelines uh, have some incredible capabilities, like I shared with Rapids. I mean, you have this entire suite of tools available, um, and we sort of want them to be utilized for this user wider group. But again, because of this chasm, the data scientists and engineers and front-end developers are all sort of separated by this divide, which finally leads us to Node Rapids and sort of the genesis of this project and what we're hoping to do. Um, really, it's using Node.js, which is sort of this perfect middle ground between these two places um, because you can communicate in JavaScript, but then also have access to hardware. So you get full access to that GPU hardware. Um, you know, and then it also ends up giving this a community uh, a streamlined API with the to access CUDA without really needing to learn new language environments. Um, again, if you're not familiar, CUDA is the GPU programming language for NVIDIA. Uh, it also gives Node.js community access to these first class data science platform like Rapids. So there are some, you know, JavaScript data science things and the uh, data manipulation tools out there, but they're, you know, sort of smaller projects and again they're sort of hampered so um why not use rapids and um at the same time you get access to all these great visualization libraries and you can run it locally or through the cloud instances and all that so you get all the benefits of sort of browser stuff but also all the hardware acceleration and performance on the hardware on the python side and so you really get to combine the best of both these worlds and chain these libraries together and have this um really compelling suite of tools at your disposal so that's where Node Rapids comes in and what we're hoping to do. Um, so a bit about some of the architecture we're doing with this before we get into a couple of the demos to kind of showcase what you can do. Uh, really, it's a very modular set of things. And um, we sort of did this purposely because 
we're not trying to make this monolithic thing. Um, everybody's use cases and needs are very different. And um, so we sort of want to enable you to pick and choose, right? So um, we have the purple stuff, which is Rapids specific and the other ones are a little bit more generic, but really we have your memory management and your data science, um, your graphics and rendering and sort of multi-instancing and your visualization. And um, one of the key components we're also developing is the streaming side. So that's how you can um, get large amounts of data uh, rendered and visualized in a browser, even if that browser might not have um, access to a GPU um, or on, the, on their local system. So uh, this is done through using hardware video encoding with uh, NVIDIA encoding uh, from the GPU uh, tied to WebRTC, which is that open source streaming framework um, usually used for like video conferencing. Um, and then that can basically show up on your video tab, uh, video tag in your front end um, and interact with it. So we have a, a demo of that at the end, um, but that's only one option. Um, you can, you know, just do something that's more simple and do some straightforward ETL with no visualization either, right? These are all pick and choose, but we have provided all these components and modules and made them available through Node.js so that you can use it for your specific use cases. Um, so with that, we'll get into the demos. Um, so we have four of these. I'll try to be quick, but this first one is sort of an example of what you could do with these couple of groupings of modules where you just do a simple ETL process um, on the server and um, use that for uh, you know some edge cases or IoT edge cases, um, some batch jobs. In this case, I'm gonna demo it through uh, Interact, which is a Jupyter Notebook type thing, but that is multi-language. And this kind of can simulate a thing you can do um, with these ETL processes using QDF bindings. So first things first, very simple. All you're doing is saying, hey, we're requiring Rapids AI QDF module, right? So we just load that up. Um, and then we are going to essentially use a toy data set. So it's a 1.5 gigabytes uh, data set of US accidents in a CSV. And um, this is from a you know, Kegel data set. And um, we're just gonna load it onto the GPU. So the thing is, before you do anything, you need to load it onto a GPU um, to be able to kind of take advantage of the GPU acceleration. And again, 1.6 gigs and it loaded in less than a second, right? So no problem, it's very fast. So um, now that we're, we have loaded the CSV, we're gonna kind of look at some basic information like how many rows and columns we have. So you can see here, it's, it's pretty big. It's over 4 million rows with um, 49 columns. Um, which is, again, we, it's nice to take a moment, you know, like try doing that in Excel, right? Um, you just sort of can't. And this is a very small toy example that usually we were, you know, able to operate on even single GPUs in the hundreds of millions of rows. So uh, we're gonna kind of do a couple of things where we look at the columns. Um, and again, this is sort of simulating a thing you would maybe do to kind of clean up some data and make it more manageable to then load up into some database. So um, we can see there's a lot of columns we don't really care about. We're gonna drop these ones here, right? So all we gotta do is again, use some data bindings for the data frame, drop these columns, boop, done. And then we're gonna see if it worked out. So these are all using nomenclature that's more familiar in the data science world. Um, it's kind of curious to see how much of that tr has translated over to Node.js world and how familiar people are with it, um, which is something we're trying to get some feedback on. Um, so then here we can see, let's do some data cleaning, right? We wanna see uh, what the temperature ranges are, for instance, uh, within this formula rows. And so we can see min max doesn't look right. And so it would, not be good if you take this data straight and load it into your like database or whatever um, with all this bad data. So what we wanna do is kind of restrict it to some more reasonable range and kind of drop out these bad inputs, right? So all we're gonna do is say, get the temperature. We're gonna set like a max min for the temps. Um, we're gonna filter them and then we're gonna see how long it takes. And again, 42 milliseconds for those you know, 4 million rows of data. And I'm gonna go through this pretty quick just because we have other demos to get through, but 
Now we can see that the max mins are great. We still have 4 million rows, so it looks pretty good. Um, and then what we're going to do is kind of do a little bit of an, uh, an analysis on it. So we're going to kind of, um, in this case, get the weather condition. We're going to kind of see when there is severe weather. So this is all the different type of conditions and weather. We can query that very quickly. And um, we're going to use regex. So the thing about regex uh, on GPUs, it's super fast. And it's a thing that people need to use all the time. So even if you don't need to use any of this sort of data frame group buys or whatever data sign things, you probably can use some regex, right? And so we're going to perform these things where we're just going to uh, you know, combine these weather conditions and filter them. And we're going to run that process. And it took 172 milliseconds for those 4 million rows. Um, so basically now we're just going to see, all right, uh, in this case, a lot of these instances, severity with rain clouds and all that, there happens a lot, yada, yada, yada. I'll speed it up a bit. Uh, in conclusion, it's pretty obvious that, um, on average accidents occur, uh, severe accidents occur when there's bad weather, which is again, makes sense. But, um, really what it, this gets, a, this toy example gets to show is, um, how easy it is to do these ETL processes, which normally you have to do in Python. Now you can no, do it in Node.js, um, simply with these interact and um, node bindings here. So uh, that's one example of using a simple sort of ETL process. Um, we have a, another demo where we're uh, using SQL bindings instead. So there's another uh, library where we uh, have uh, SQL kind of query engine and very similar sort of uh, architecture, um, except in this case, we built out a, a small front end using um, this uh, library for, you know, query building. And um, in case, let's say you don't feel like learning a lot of the data science nomenclature and you're more familiar with SQL queries, right? Um, I'm not going to run this one just because, um, you know, for time's sake, but essentially, uh, with our example, you, we've loaded all of English Wikipedia. So that's 16 gigabytes uh, CSV and around, in this case, if I remember, 15 million uh, unique articles. And we're able to load up on, um, uh, you know, again, simple local system, in this case, two GPUs, uh, and query uh, this through this interface just through the browser and uh, sets up some bindings. And then now you can say, see how many times Shakespeare appears in these articles. And in this case, it took under 40 seconds and uh, to query the 16 gigabytes of data. And this is through, you know, all the text of each article for all of English Wikipedia. So, and this is not nearly optimized. This is literally an intern project where we just finished. Um, and so, pretty impressive results and kind of showcasing what you can do the performance wise and uh, kind of the benefits of, of going to these GPUs um, and the, the benefits we want to give out to the, the wider Node.js community. Um, so the next one is a server-side compute with client-side rendering of geospatial viz. And um, this is something that's more similar to our original like GTC demo. So we're using uh, QDF and QSpatial because we're doing some spatial queries and then uh, Node.js app to get those bindings and then a client-side uh, React app, in this case, using DeckGL. So um, I'm going to start it up the fun and joys of live demos. So um, in this case, I have a Docker container running um, with the image built with all our libraries. And uh, we've made it very simple for you to run these demos. So basically you just go yarn demo in the, and you pick your demo you wanna run. In this case, we want to do the client server one. So number five, run it. And um, in this case, we're using uh, Nextify to, to build the app and we have it running uh, locally. So let me open that up. All right. Live demos are always fun. <laughs> okay. So we have two examples in this one. Um, we're going to do the Uber movement dashboard. So I'm going to load this up. So this is using uh, an Uber data set um, for, well, I think 2021 for the Bay Area. Um, in this case, we have uh, 40 million rows. Um, it's 
a couple of gigabytes again, and we're using DeckGL to provide the visualization for it and um, the kind of geographic regions. And so the way this data set works out is you have your source points and your destination points, and you kind of kind of to see you know, how many trips tr per day they are, when the peaks are, and you can kind of do some neat analysis on it. Um, and again, this is Viz rendered in client side. And if we do click on a region, we'll now immediately filter it and see where uh, this source trips end up. So in this case, uh, Northern Bay Area tends to go everywhere. But if we click down here, we can see, yeah, not many people will go that far in this area. Um, I would, as a Viz person, I would love to just keep clicking on these and finding some really cool patterns. Like it's really interesting. Like for instance, Oakland has a lot of disappearances, and that's probably because there's an Oakland airport there. And so people are being picked up from the airport and being delivered everywhere. Pretty neat. But the thing is, uh, I immediately stopped caring about the tooling and started caring about the data and clicking around and investigating it. And I, you know, I forgot that, oh, I'm filtering 40 million rows, right? I'm just more interested in finding these data patterns, right? Um, that's what we want to get to is uh, fostering this kind of much easier interaction uh, with your visualizations and your data versus, um, you know, trying to figure out how can I visualize this? How can I work with such big data? Um, so this next demo, I'm going to start up here. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, actually, before I start it up, we'll talk a bit about the architecture on it. Um, so this is sort of the uh, fanciest version of what you can do and sort of the most um, stressed uh, use case that we can think of and sort of the kind of big vision that we're trying to build out towards here. And you can see there's a lot of stuff going on, but essentially we have our QDF bindings and QGraph bindings. This is going to be a graph visualization. Um, so we're going to do graph rendering and compute with um, layouts for Force Atlas 2, which is a layout algorithm. We're going to then render that on the server side. We're going to stream that and code that video uh, on the server and then stream it to client side JS and interact with it on the client. Um, and all while, again, doing all this intense compute and rendering uh, server side. And so um, with that, let's try it out. All right, it's working. Okay, so this is still a kind of work in progress GUI, but um, eventually what we're hoping to do is make this a standalone Docker image um, so that you can, without even doing source builds or anything like that, you can kind of just, um, take it and run with it and have arbitrary, uh, you know, files that you can load up. Um, so in this case, we have a little UI we're working on where you can basically just say, hey, select these node files, select this edge files, uh, load it on the GPU, and then select the columns that's, uh, you know, interesting that you want to uh, visualize. So in this case, we're just picking our source and destinations, you know, your color components, your bundles and all that and render it. So um, this isn't a particularly big example, but you can see it's already kind of a crazy hairball. Uh, this is 5,000 edges with 15,700 nodes, right? Uh, and you can see that it's no problem to zoom in, zoom out, interact with it. So this is actually a video stream and not a client-side rendered viz. Um, so Again, super easy and performant, but even more impressive is now we're gonna run a pretty compute intensive um, Force Atlas 2 uh, layout algorithm. And you can see it now it's computing um, the layout for this force for all you know 15,000 nodes and edges and it's doing fine. And this is on, you know, this is gonna be able to streamed on any sort of client computer. Um, we're able to do box select through it. So let's say I'm going to quickly try to select these. And you can see that, you know, now we've selected just this nodes from this edge list. And um, we're able to kind of interact with this. In this case, it's just sort of a benchmarking um, 
uh, graph, but you know, with real data, you can have a much more interesting kind of insights and visualizations here. But the, the real key here is you're able to do this very high performance visualization um, using sort of off the shelf open source frameworks. Um, kind of another thing we want to point out is a lot of this wouldn't be possible without using Node.js specifically because we have multiple workers here. And so the benefit of using that means um, essentially each worker is getting a single kind of frame buffer uh, to render and then is rendering that out. So then um, because we're using Node.js for that, you can really distribute the rendering into like compute workload um, through either multiple GPUs or um, to multiple instances. And so that means is uh, you don't necessarily need a single GPU for a single person accessing this. You can have multiple people accessing this with a single GPU, or you can have multiple GPUs uh, for like particularly big workloads. And they're all sort of taking little chunks of the data and like working at it at the same time. Um, and that wouldn't really be possible easily without using Node.js. Um, so you can see here, this is sort of where we're at now. Um, but uh, you know, if we want to go even bigger, uh, now we sort of have the the server side rendering compute. We can now say, all right, we want to do some culling because this is too messy, or we want to do even more nodes. We want to put on screen at the same time. Um, hey, let's use the quad tree algorithm in QML and then do some you know very fast uh, culling um, based on the kind of the viewport, and we can quickly add bindings for that and then create that. So you can sort of see how these. Um, Again, chained libraries add some very high performance capabilities um, to, to visualization and to kind of data work in general. So let's go back to present. So live demos work great, no problem. Um, again, so we're still working on this. We're just getting kind of the point where we were able to tie this to a UI and get the video streaming working. But um, we're hoping to have this as a self-contained Docker image that you can play around with soon. Um, but that being said, what's next? We have a, a lot of things planned. Um, sort of in the short term, we have building up this the visualization apps. Uh, Midterm, we're really hoping to get some enterprise proof of concepts where um, you know uh, some. Uh, companies that need some high performance viz or some ETL streaming, um, and they already have like a big Node.js workflow uh, or pipeline would be great to um, work with them to kind of try out the use case. And then longer term, uh, this is where everybody in the Node.js community comes in. Uh, I want, it would be great if we had broader community adoption because, um, you know, frankly, we have our viz use cases and that's sort of why we're building this out. But, you know, we've also built it to be very um, useful for anything else you can think of and the things we need your help to help think of those things. Like I said, we're just getting started. Um, again, Rapids is still expanding. We're adding more bindings. We're improving the documentation as fast as we can. Uh, we're gonna have this turnkey Docker Viz app. Um, next, we'd like to try this out on some um, cloud service providers. So again, you can just go to URL and it'll start working. Um, we're hoping to get WSL2 support uh, tried out. So that is for Windows users right now. This only works in the uh, Ubuntu environments. Um, in theory, it should work with WSL2. So we're gonna try that out. Um, ARM support, uh, we are almost there with it, but let's say if you, you know, wanted to have uh, experiments with the smaller Jets and Nanos, which are like a hundred dollar mini kind of Raspberry Pi for GPUs, um, we're having support there. And then other things like VS Code plugins uh, for you know, reading CSVs that are tens of gigabytes or whatever and manipulating them. And um, we're working with the community there to see if that's a useful thing. So um, we're just getting started and a lot of it is kind of based on community feedback. We're, this is the first sort of time we're reaching out to the Node.js developer community. And um, we want to see what use cases you'd like us to develop and, um, you know, where you think this could be super helpful. Um, again, we have our viz biases, but I think there's a lot more this can do. So uh, with that, uh, this is all, again, open source. It's still in technical preview, but um, 
you know, just go to GitHub, Rapids AI and Node. And uh, we have everything you need there to get this set up and running um, with either source builds or we have all kinds of kinds of um, Docker images that you can pull and try out um, without having to do any building. Um, so if you have any issues, just again, start some GitHub issues or reach out to us on the um, Slack channel. So it's called Rapids AI or Rapids Go AI and it's the Node Rapids channel in Slack. And uh, we'll be checking those regularly. So early days still, but um, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about the capabilities we're um, enabling and um, we're, we wanna see where the Node.js community takes it. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Alan. It was such, I love a good data visualization, but just to see that, <laughs> that live demo working so well, um, I applaud you. And I also applaud Paul, who's been answering a bunch of questions for you on the chat channel. So Paul Taylor, thank you very Thanks. much for jumping in on those <laughs> as well. Um, I am not going to have a lot of time to ask you questions because we, we've we've got to move on. But I do want to ask you a couple of things. Um, so uh, we've got one here that's just come in. So what is the path fr from millions of records? Oh, gosh, people keep on adding things. So I've got to hang on. Give me a second. I've got to copy this over. OK. See, I've, I've got a little process. You can't see this, but because people are so wanting to add things, it, the, the chat moves up too quickly for me to read. Um, here we go. So um, Zebski says, what is the path from millions of records that exist to millions of records to starting to get protests to generate a viz? So you're not loading the, uh, the data through Node's FS module, right? No. Yeah, this is, um, uh, well, so there's other, there's different ways to do it. Um, right now, uh, we're just using standard IO to get it into the GPU. Um, there's different ways you can optimize it. So, it, you know, you can use error format or, um, CSV is not the ideal. There's, um, also a capability coming in the future called GPU direct storage or GDS. Um, I believe that's going to actually be coming soon where uh, you'll be able to kind of use a GPU as a file system. So it'll make things a lot simpler and a lot faster in that sense too. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, it does for me, thank you. Um, I can tell you that there is a lot of interest in here. I'm watching a lot of people I'm applauding your talk. So I think that there will be a lot of people reaching out to you um, on the Slack channel. And um, yeah, yeah, if you've got any more questions, Peter, uh, uh, sorry, um, I've forgotten. Paul is there as well answering them for you. So thank you ever so much, Alan. Um, thank you for your talk. It's been great. I'm going to wave you off. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.